So over 10 years, we've been building galleys for vehicles, but that's not where my journey of building galley systems for vehicles started. My very first stove I ever had is right here. It was a, it's a SIG from Switzerland and I got it, man, I must have been 13 years old when I got this bad boy and I loved it because it was one of the first dual fuel stoves that I caught wind of where I could use white gas or gasoline and I just thought that was super cool. Yeah, so this really is where my journey began with stoves, my very first one. From there, we've had many stoves, many different cook pots, kitchen setups and everything. And today, we still use a lot of the same things that we were doing 10 years ago, but then we also have extravagant kitchens all the way up to fixed kitchens that are like in the X1H behind me here. So let's begin. Let's talk about proven galley systems that we've used over the years with Expedition Overland here. Number one, let's talk about a micro kitchen setup. The first thing that you need when cooking, obviously, is a stove of some kind. For us, it's just jet boil. This jet boil is really old. I've had it for a long time, but it still goes with us today. Even though we have really fancy cook partner stoves, etc., there's something about a jet boil that is just so efficient, especially for making that first pot of coffee in the morning or that first just a little quick batch of hot water to get you going. A, a jet boil is where it's at. And like I say, even though we have fancier setups now, we still carry the jet boil with us. So this is a great place to start. It's proven to work. If you haven't seen one of these, they're very simple. They come apart. This is a base if you need it. Pour the water in here. Turn it on, click it on, and in two minutes at sea level, you've got boiling water. Then from there, you put it into a dehydrated bag. This one is one of my favorites, breakfast skillet from Mountain House. Or there's others too, there's O'Meals. I've never tried this one yet, but uh, we just bought it at the store. And I keep these in my hunting packs and in my, the back of my prospector. Uh, for search and rescue calls, all kinds of stuff. And all it takes is the heated water put into the bag, and with the spork, you have a full kitchen. This is a pot and the, and the dish if you need it to be, or you can eat right out of the bag. Doesn't get much simpler than that. Quick note on silverware. Back in the day in Alaska, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna treat the whole crew with having great silverware so that we can uh, feel a little bit more human and uh, normal on the road. Bad idea. It ended up being far more work than it was ever worth and it was after that year that we went down to everyone having a spork. To this day we just issue a spork and each person is responsible for his own spork for cleaning it and keeping it at hand so that the rest of the crew doesn't have to keep washing everybody's utensils. Everybody's in charge of their own utensil. Quick note on sporks. There's a couple different kinds. This is the Snow Peak titanium spork. It's the more expensive one. This is the Sea to Summit aluminum one. This one is 10 years old. This one is three years old. And this one is already breaking down. However, the cost difference might justify you buying more of these. But there's nothing better than the titanium spork. And you're not really an overlander unless you have a titanium spork. Let's move on. So this is actually one of the galley systems that we're using right now. It's part of the Adventure Cook Set, three liter pot, and a whole bunch of dishes and everything fit inside of it. Now we have actually got all these dishes spread out amongst the galley. We don't actually pack it all this way just due to how we set up our galleys, which we'll get into later. So anyway, check out the Stanley Adventure cook set. It's pretty top notch. That This is what is in all of our other kitchens that you see behind me. Other than my super ultralight kit with my just my jet boil. Okay, now let's talk about quickly when setting up a galley, what's the first thing you typically need? A table. 
quick tip on a proven method. Pull the table out first. Don't stack your table at the bottom of all your stuff. Keep a table quickly accessible. It's the first thing you need and it should be the last thing that goes in your truck at the end of a, a camp setup. That'll save you a lot of headache because the first thing you do is you're going to want to set stuff somewhere. Find a table system that works for you. If it's a simple lifetime table at Walmart that folds in half, those work great. Or get all, all the way up into the easy on tables that fly, fold down and slide under roof racks. That's a pretty killer solution as well. So let's go from here to the different trucks working our way up from the least complex all the way to the nicest kitchen that we operate here with Expedition Overland. So here we have the surface that I work off of the prospector when I'm cooking out of this truck. This is a most, the most simple and basic form of packable kitchen outside of the jet boil, which I consider an ultralight galley. Uh, this is the next thing in line. So what do I carry? Cooler. This truck is not outfitted with a fridge. Now my first overland trip that I ever did was back in 20... 10 or 2009, 2010-ish, and I carried a Yeti cooler at the time and uh, stuffed it full of ice and some dry ice at the bottom, and I went 10 days on a cooler. Totally acceptable. You can absolutely go for a long time. Go around the world on a cooler if you wanted, if you wanted to face the kind of the hassles that come with a cooler. Now, this isn't a fridge talk. But I would highly recommend that if you're going to be overlanding a lot, that you go from a cooler system to a fridge system. You'll just see so many advantages over the, within your galley and the weight savings that it's a no-brainer. And we can talk about fridges at some other point, but from here on out, every galley has a fridge. We pack this, the galley around inside this Redox bag. Now, I'm really just showing you this to show off because only six of these were ever made. But it represents the ability to just pack your kitchen in a tote or in a bag or whatever and it slides out at the end, your pots and your pans come out, your silverware, your spices, they're all contained in a central location and then they go away at the end of the night. From here, we're going to start working our way into semi-permanent solutions for galleys and permanent solutions for galleys. And the differentiation is typically a fixed galley is put inside of a dedicated overland vehicle. Come see this one. First one on the list for a portable kitchen is the PCOR galley system. Here is a semi-portable, but yet semi, let's call it just semi-permanent galley system. This came in the PCOR system for the Tundra uh, from Patriot Campers. And there are other systems like this in the US, uh, other manufacturers build things like this. They're pretty cool. And the whole idea behind these types of galleys are efficiency. You get to camp, you pull one thing out, and it just kind of lays itself out and you can start cooking. I am a huge proponent of these. They are, a, I don't know, they really make your camping experience really great. Unless you got a lot of time to set up camps every single day, kitchens can become so complex to set up. You know, I got to put legs in and you're going to do this and that. Finding kitchens and galley systems that are fast and expedient has always been the name of the game for me. So Justin at Patriot Campers came up with this for his uh, cooking needs out of a PCOR or a tray or the back of a truck down in Australia. And we've been able to use it for a couple of years now. It's great. We like it. And it goes away and packs up quick. This is a good system. This comes with a Dometic stove and the PCORs an upright fridge, which has been a unique thing for us, but hey, we kind of like it. Um, it's really great for a couple days and a couple guys. If you're restocking often, a fridge like this is great. Other than that, you're gonna want a bigger galley system. This is something that we strive for in all of our galleys. Efficiency comes out quickly and goes away quickly. The proponent of this guy, of this type of system in the US, has really been Mario Donovan of Adventure Trailers. And Adventure Trailers really kind of, as far as I know, pioneered a lot of the awareness for kitchens like this 
especially with their JK stove, which is what we have installed in our habitat. So take a look at that. Oh, hello there. Let's talk about the Habitat's galley system. What we wanted was galley tables to be readily available when we got to camp. Drop these and you have more galleys. All the way across work surfaces. We feed a lot of people and have over the years, especially in South America, we primarily ate out of this galley for six to eight people for three months. What did we do? Tables on the sides. Then we built an alu box. We actually had two of these. These are the taller ones. The taller ones are nice because they can fit uh, taller bottles and things like that. This one was used as our galley box for all of our cookware. We even put a front runner uh, organizational kit in there so you could pull that out, pull dishes out of it. That's now what we carry the uh, Stanley Adventure Cook set in. And then this was used as a footstool to get into the back of the habitat when it's not in use. So this doubled by putting a goose gear plate on the top of this as a stool to get in. And it fully slides out and there's your galley. With anything on an overland vehicle, try to have everything serve at least two purposes or at least one mission critical purpose. We run the National Luna Twin in this. Um, the Twin is really built for long-term overlanding. It has dual compressors and dual zones. So I can tell this side of the fridge to be a freezer, this side to be a refrigerator, both to be freezers, both to be refrigerators, a lot of options. It's the biggest fridge we have, and it is amazing the amount of food that we can store inside this one fridge. There's a lot of times we'll come out of the store and like, I don't know if it's gonna fit, and it does. So take a look at this. If you've got a big family, large groups, take a look at the, the uh, National Lunar Twin Fridge. In addition to the livability on this, uh, truck system, we worked closely with Goose Gear. Goose Gear built a floor plate system that uh, accommodates our power, our furnace, and our heater system, becomes the base for our fridge and galley, and for our spices drawers over here on the left. So when we're cooking outside, we can put non-essentials here on the bottom, like paper towels, etc., or anything else that we deem fit that works good there. And then on top, there's a secondary drawer, a lot of utensils, cups, things like that that we want to be able to get to, especially, and I like to carry my jet boil in here when we're carrying it in this vehicle, because on top, we built it so that the seat also lifts up and you can get to the stuff on inside if it's a horrible blustery day like it was that one time in Bolivia. So, this is a killer galley system and I think you could take a lot of the concepts that we have here towards your vehicle builds uh, just be thinking about usability be slow to build something use it slowly figure out what you really need and eventually you'll get the perfect system there's nothing really that I change about this other than adding some sort of a powered water tank that uh, we have experienced now on other vehicles like the Patriot Camper P cores and the X1H that I'll show you next. So here we have the Top Dog. This is one of the greatest inventions to overlanding of all time, and I'm not kidding. I know Justin and Sarah personally, and I know where this trailer came from. It came from them wanting to take their family out and camp on the beach. So this trailer here is the perfect blend of eating and sleeping and storage. What it carries is the galley, and a really nice bed. And that is huge when you're overlanding. So let's dive in. Behind this panel on any X1 is the galley. And they've designed it for cooking for groups. We have cooked for up to 18 people off of this very galley system for 10 days, mind you. The stove comes out right here. And just to be up front 
We are sponsored by Patriot Campers, but I think what you can take from this, if you're never going to buy a Patriot Camper or anything, look at the systems here and how they've incorporated it. And when you go to build your galley systems, maybe there's something you can glean from this in your system. All right, so in here, we swapped out the Bromic uh, stove for the uh, Cook Partner. These are great stoves. They were originally designed for whitewater rafters on big, and cooking for groups, and then they've since adapted it for overlanding, and I have never found a better stove than this one. It's certainly a buy once, cry once, but you'll have it forever. They break down very simply, rinse out, and their BTUs are second to none. I've never had a hotter stove than this one, and that allows it to compete with the wind and the elements when they're not in your favor. Moving on, this trailer is equipped with a hot water Wabasto system with the push of a button right here. We can turn on the, wa the hot water heater and in 10 minutes we have hot water all the way to the sink. Now, we, at first we were like, man, that seems really like over the top. And then you start using it and you have warm water and you can set the timer and it's hot in the morning when you get up. It takes a lot of the systems that you see in campers and puts them out here where you're cooking outside and living outside of it, but you still have those luxuries that you would have inside of an RV. The fridge is a Dometic. I'm not sure what model of Dometic this is. Uh, it also fits an ARB fridge because of the low clearance to slide into the drawers. So that's been operating with us for a couple of years now. Bowls and silverware. We like that here because you can wash it and it's going right where it needs to go. All of this is still designed to go away quickly. In she goes. This has a little tab on the bottom so that if it's windy it's not banging around. There you go. Stove goes back in here. And your galley's put away. It's pretty stinking efficient. In the back, they have included a big galley drawer. And we use this for all of our food. Now in the front of the trailer, it's one last little goodie that we really use a lot. Uh, we didn't anticipate using it as much as we do. Because frankly, we never had it before. And now that we have it, we don't know how we live without it. And that's the Weber 1000 grill. We have used the heck out of this thing, obviously, and it just made camp life and food even that much better on the road. I've heard overlanding described as driving somewhere remote to eat something, and I would absolutely agree with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Eating and traveling go hand in hand. Eating well outside is a lot of fun, part of the fun. Today you've seen the, the lot of it. This is everything we have. It's getting dark. It's taken so long to talk about it. But I hope you learned something from it. I hope that uh, you get inspired to build a really cool galley system. And these are all the different things that we use and are proven inside of Expedition Overland to work inside of a galley.